So we all will remember the days leading to the circuit breaker when people throng the supermarkets and all the mini marts. Oh, toilet paper. Toilet paper. Maggie me. Maggie noodles. Eggs. Eggs. Yeah, flour after that as well. Um, tomato paste, stewed tomatoes. <laughs> Just couldn't find any of those things. <laughs> because okay. you bought it all, guys. You yeah, bought it all. that's right. Um, you didn't just hit your supermarkets and the hypermarts. A lot of you bought online. And of course, we hit our mini marts, basically raided the shelves. That is correct. Now, mini marts, okay, some believe play an important role right now. And they play an important role, maybe perhaps an even more important role in the future as well. So the HDB wants to rejuvenate Heartland shops and to examine the value they bring to local communities. Our next guest believes mini marts can continue to innovate and evolve. Exciting times for them. In fact, he's done some thinking in a commentary called Rethinking Mini Marts in the Age of COVID-19. You can read it today online. Kelvin Tan's his name. He's a retail consultant and director at New Econ Holdings. He manages 19 mini marts in Singapore. Good morning, Kelvin. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Yasmin and Arno. Nice to have you uh, invite me here. It's great. Me Is it meet you guys online? Yep. It's great of you to agree to talk to us. Kelvin, let's start by asking you of uh, the 19 mini marts uh, that mm -hmm. you manage, that your company manages. Did, 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 did you see any kind of, any sort of panic buying yesterday after the announcement was made? Yeah, so I, I think yesterday we were um, having our first round of um, like uh, reminding everyone of all the safe man management uh, measures uh, as we receive uh, updates from the government. Right, so I think um, we have been doing a quick poll. I think um, now that we are in a second round of this, um, everyone seems to be more well prepared. So we do see some additional cues in some of our stores, but uh, I think overall, uh, out of our 19 stores, most of them are seeing like a more calm approach to approaching the tightening of the measures. Okay, and you talked about how mm. you've been addressing your 19 mini marts to prepare to adapt to the latest measures. I mean, besides safe distancing, Kelvin, what have you been talking mm -hmm. about? Um, so the very first thing when we first started uh, um, Circuit Breaker, it was about uh, education. So I think it's important for us to update the whole retail chain so that our retail operators and our franchisees understand about the new upcoming trends uh, relating to the pandemic. So in particular, this time round, what we're going to do is we are going to be updating the whole chain uh, with uh, what is the new strains that we are seeing in Singapore and why is there a call for concern for tightening of measures and making sure that we are more vigilant. So I think what we're going to do uh, from our end is we are going to print out uh, all of our safe management notices and make it more uh, dominant. Uh, and we are also going to um, scale up our checks uh, with our, our retailers. Okay. So what we have done, yeah, what we have done is we have leveraged on like Google <coughs> Cloud services. So we can actually um, like seamlessly uh, send out the notices and uh, they can just print it out. Uh, but from our end, we can also do like virtual checks to make sure that they are reminded uh, to stay compliant to all the safe management. Mm. Kelvin, okay. that's, that's all well and good. I'm sure everybody understands the dangers mm. of the variants and everything. But mini marts operate on a very different mode. I mean, a lot of times it's very familiar people walking in and out. You're kind of friend, friend, mm. you know, that sort of thing. And, and I think, you know, the people who run the mini marts can't be as strict as the people who run the super marts in terms of getting people to queue and everything. Because, you know, you, after all, you're dealing with like a friend. There must be a difference That's there, right? right? Yeah. So uh, the interesting thing about this is that, you know, during Circuit Breaker Phase 1, uh, we, we had all these um, like panic buying and uh, we have the safe distancing ambassadors around and we had customers who were queuing. Uh, the interesting thing about Minimarts is that we are a place where it forms like kind of a heartland community culture. Sure. So as we are trying to make sure that we enforce and stay compliant with all the measures, you do see how customers uh, become more confident. Uh, we realize that this is uh, one important measure that we need to do. So as a chain, what we have is we can have uh, shared resources and we can continuously educate and ensure that we remind our operators to be compliant. So what we do is uh, sometimes there are even customers will remind one another and say, hey, you know, one meter social distancing. Yeah. And, 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 and they show concern of, uh, for us in, in the okay. other way. So it's kind of so community taking care of one another. 
Yeah, it's more like a family and everyone is like trying to remind one another that, hey, 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 you know, we shouldn't be doing this. We should be doing this as a, as a nation, as Singapore, so that we can all overcome this pandemic. Okay, together. so in some ways, a mini mart can become like the focal point of a small town, you know, when, when people all gather maybe at the hardware store mm -hmm. or at, at the, the local grocery store. I mean, has the, has the pandemic in some way made this possible and how has it made this possible? Uh, definitely has uh, escalated the need for mini marts. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me because uh, back then when I came back to transform the mini mart business, uh, I actually had a lot of learnings from it. It is really not just about a place that sells essentials, yep. uh, but a place of laughter where we have network, we can see three types of kinship, friendship and relationship. So we even have staff who actually got into a family together because they work at the mini marts and they got to know one another. And it's also a place of social support because there will be times where sometimes we'll see some older folks, uh, they don't really have, um, uh, they, they are struggling with coping with life. And what we do is we end up finding out about this and trying to connect them to social workers so that they can uh, be of help, you know, from uh, from from the government uh, with all the assistance schemes that is available for for the less needy. Kelvin, talk so, to us about. Um, can can we can we just switch mm. a little? Can we talk about digitalization and, and mini marts? Okay. Uh, I, I went to a, a little mini mart run by a, an elderly couple in Tiong Bahru. Uh, the only digitalization mm -hmm. I saw was the guy's phone number pasted there on the wall for the whole world to see, so we could pay now him <laughs> in case we didn't have cash. But I'm sure there are other ways you can digitalize uh, mini marts. What are your thoughts? In terms of digitalization, I think we have been a big adopter of digital, right? So some of the key digitalization uh, solutions that we have embarked is to work with Grab. So now Grab Food not only delivers FMB, but they also deliver groceries to um, the area within the store. Now, the, the, the unique point about us uh, being new Econ Mini Marts is that we are located in the heartlands. So we really like to take advantage of the close proximity to our customers and we uh, can leverage on other platforms like Google, Facebook and Instagram to grow our digital presence so that people know about us. So we have been using all of these and aside from that, we uh, have moved into a cloud-based inventory system. So that will give like the headquarters an oversight of mm. what's moving fast and Kelvin, you know, fast I, inventory. I have to ask you about this. Can you be mm. both a modern, you know, organization, you know, digitally mm. connected uh, with all the cloud-based, you know, systems in place and still be, you know, part of a community and retain, you know, that old school charm and retain the connection with, with the residents, both young and old? Is there a contradiction or do you see them, you know, going hand in hand? Actually, yeah, that's an excellent point, Arnold. Um, what we are trying to do is to simplify things. Uh, in this pandemic, what we have realized is the importance of kinship and what more, um, heartwarming than to cook a meal on your own. So what we stick to achieve is to actually free up the time that we have so that our operators can engage and speak to the customer. And now, right, actually what we are looking and seeing is that we just want to be true to ourselves and be really sincere because it's really the personal connections that will leave a lasting impression in our customers. Yeah. Heart. You know, like for example, if an auntie comes in, right, or the machit comes in, yeah. I will know like, oh, what is the favorite brand of ketchup monies that she uses for her tahu goreng? Mm -hmm. So, you know, immediately, like even before she talks about it, we were like, oh, you're getting this, right? And then she will say, yeah, 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 I'm going to cook tahu goreng today. So these are, are the little, little things that uh, touches your customer's heart mm -hmm. and we can still retain that. You know, aside from looking at adoption of digital, yep. digital helps you to free up the time. But the additional time that you have, it's to allow the operators to uh, make a more closer, um, personable experience for our customers. So you, so you believe that the face-to-face -face interaction, people going to the store is still important? Mm -hmm. Charming. Definitely. Because it's, it's difficult to like replicate this kind of personal experience, right? Like if you talk to a Google Home and you take Google Home as your girlfriend, it can never replace, you know, like an actual girlfriend. I certainly hope not, <laughs> Kelvin. <laughs> okay, lovely hearing your stories. All the very best to you and your mini marts. Kelvin Tan is retail consultant and director at New Econ Holdings, a group of 19 mini marts in Singapore.